Atheists fail at logic. If there's one uniting feature of atheists, besides their lack of belief, it's their almost pathological inability to formulate a logically valid argument. And you see this in popular atheists like Lawrence Krauss and Thunderfoot, who, in attempting to parody syllogistic reasoning, reveal themselves to be incapable even of formulating a logically valid syllogism. All of which brings us to YouTube user Dark Antic slash Dark Matter, who attempts to refute the fine-tuning argument with this crap. Some say that God had to finally tune the universe. That the physical constants that make the ingredients for life possible to exist in our universe are within such a narrow range that it had to be done on purpose by an intelligent force. In the same way that evolution did away with the fine-tuning of life, and the discovery of extrasolar planets did away with the fine-tuning of Earth, some good scientific arguments like the multiverse and top-down cosmology are on the way to deal with this little fine-tuning boy who keeps crying wolf. Ooh, they're on the way to deal with fine-tuning. We just need to have faith that these arguments are on the way. Isn't that textbook naturalism of the gaps? I'm sorry, but the multiverse isn't going to be of much help to you, because A, you need a finely tuned multiverse to produce a finely tuned universe. B, even if we grant the multiverse, as a matter of conditional probability, we should much more expect to find ourselves as Boltzmann brains hallucinating the universe rather than corporeal beings inhabiting the universe. And C, if you need to invoke an infinite number of universes to rescue your position, you know you're in trouble. But to make this fine-tuning argument untenable for classical theism, all we really need to do is honestly answer a simple question. Yes, we get it, Dark Matter. Your car is much more awesome than ours. Why do you have to finely tune something? What's the reason for fine tuning? Think about it. It's not because you're powerful, it's because you're powerless. It's not because you want to, it's because you have to. Lotus wanted this car to perform a certain way, so they had to finely tune it. But why couldn't they just build it in whatever way they wanted, without care or measure, and expect it to perform exactly the way they intended? Uh, because the good folks at Lotus are not omnipotent gods who create the universe and set the laws by which it operates. Because we are bound by uncompromising external restrictions. In the case of finely tuning a car, or musical instrument, or any physical thing really, those external restrictions are called physics. The sole necessity for fine tuning is because of external restrictions. So if God had to finely tune the universe, because it couldn't have been created any other way. Uh, no one is saying that the universe could not have been created any other way. The fine tuning argument grants that the universe could have been created in an infinite number of ways. As it happens, our universe has been finely tuned in an astoundingly improbable way to permit life. I ask you, theists, what were God's external restrictions? And who or what imposed those restrictions upon God? There are no external restrictions on God. The restrictions are the astonishingly narrow range of values of these universal constants that would permit life, that would permit matter, that would permit anything recognizable as a universe. These restrictions apply to the universe God created. The restrictions do not apply to God. Pretty simple concept there. What forced God's design in the same uncompromising way that our designs are forced by physics? External restrictions cause the need for fine-tuning. God finally tuned the universe. Therefore, God is bound by external restrictions. Holy crap! What an absolute abortion of logic. What an embarrassment. This argument follows a pattern of failure familiar to atheist arguments, 
where I say it fails and then it fails and then it fails, meaning we could grant every single hinky premise along the way and the argument still fails. Now uh, I'm going to have to uh, telestrate at least some of the myriad failures of this argument, so uh, you're going to have to bear with me here. One, external restrictions cause the need for fine tuning. Uh, could this premise be a little more vague? Okay, no analytic philosopher would construct a logical argument on such a vague premise. Uh, I personally would rephrase this as fine tuning is only meaningful when there is an external standard, but sure, I'll let this slide, whatever. Two, God finally tuned the universe. Indeedy duty he did, but he doesn't really explain what precisely that means here, but again, I'll let this slide. Three, therefore, God is bound by external restrictions. No, 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 no. Okay, the first premise tells us, of, tells us that where there are external restrictions, there's a need for fine-tuning. It does not say that there must be external restrictions where there is fine-tuning. The argument dark matter wants to make here commits the fallacy of the undistributed middle, but that's not even the worst of it. Because in the first premise, he's talking about the necessity of fine-tuning, and in the second, he's talking about the reality of fine-tuning. The second premise says that God fine-tuned the universe, not that God needed to fine-tune the universe. Even if we overlook every other failure of this argument, the most it could tell us is that somewhere there are restrictions to the fine-tuned universe, not that God is bound by them. This argument doesn't even rise to the level of a formal logical fallacy. It's just garbage. But it gets worse. Much worse. Okay, just shut up. You've already shown that you can't produce a logical argument to save your life, and anything you'd have to say at this point would be worthless. And for the remainder of the video, he tries to tease out the logical consequences of his horseshit argument. But when your argument is horseshit, anything corollary to the argument is horseshit. So let's just skip forward here. An omnipotent God can create exactly what he intends because he has ultimate creative freedom. But according to the fine-tuning argument, God could only have made the universe in a very specific way. Uh, no, no one is saying that God could have only created the universe in a very specific way. That's a complete straw man. As far as we can tell, life is just a tiny, tiny part of the universe. If the universe was created specifically for life, then I would expect it to revolve around us, so to speak. An omnipotent being could have created in whatever way he wanted, and if he wanted the universe to be for us, then instead of there being billions of light years of hostile space, it could have been billions of light years of a Garden of Eden. This is what I call a seems to me argument, and atheists love these kind of known arguments. Basically, they say, if God existed, it seems to me that X, Y, and Z would be the case. But unless you could prove that X, Y, and Z must be the case if God existed, then it doesn't really prove anything at all. Or it could have been something more inconceivable, like an innocuous space filled with disembodied minds. Uh, no, it's not so inconceivable at all. In fact, a universe of unembodied minds is the vastly more likely result in a universe that wasn't designed. But that's not what we see. We see Earth life, which is mostly bacteria and aquatic, existing in a rather precarious, temporary, minuscule film, coating a ball of rock hurling through a hostile vacuum. Uh, yes, we're all mortal beings forced to share a finite space, surrounded by death on all sides, hanging in precarious balance. This is all essential to Christianity. This is stuff Christianity has acknowledged from the very beginning, and it doesn't really have much of anything to do with a fine-tuning argument. The fine-tuning argument simply says that the universe has been fine-tuned for life. It doesn't say that the universe has been fine-tuned to be paradise. We are but the single blink of an eye exclaiming that the eye exists just so that we could have our blink. Now that you've had enough of Dark Matter's puerile, inept attempts at philosophy, there are links and videos in the description describing the fine-tuning argument in full. Please check them out, and please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.